Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to kick back and relax with a palette swatching video. If you saw my recent Jackson's haul, you'll already know that I ordered a few new colors for Merlin Schmal. I had intended to put them in a new plastic White Knights palette, but the pans didn't fit. So instead, I moved my White Knights pans into a new palette and the Roman Schmal is moving into the metal palette that the White Knights used to be in. Before this, I had 21 colors in a three row palette. I ordered more pans than I knew I had room for. However, there were a couple of new specialty colors that I wanted to try out, some new pigment numbers that I wanted to research for all of you, and I was also trying to decide between several of their different earth tones. I also left in a little bit of footage here at the start of the video so that you can see me unpackage these. I know that some other people have said that they have had issues with the Roman Schmal sticking to the wrappers, but I didn't encounter that for most of the pans that I opened. I did some swatching off camera to nail down my final selections, and today I have my new custom 28 full pan set to share with you all in this swatching video. This video is intended to simply share my main color selections with you, but if you would like a more detailed review on this brand, I will link the review I made last year into the card above and a link in the description below. In general, I don't feel like the online swatches on Jackson's do these watercolors very much justice, so if you are trying to select your new colors, I hope that this video will help you in that regard for the few colors that I do have. First up, we have Aurelian Hue PY151. Benzamidazolone Yellow is a non-toxic, light-fast, semi-transparent, moderately staining, non-granulating, intense yellow pigment. This is a middle yellow that does not lean particularly green or orange. Golden Yellow PY181. Benzamidazo Golden is a new pigment that I don't know very well yet, but I'm looking forward to trying it out. According to Roman Schmals and artiscreation.com, it is a non-toxic, semi-transparent, moderately staining, non-granulating, light-fast pigment. However, it has not yet been rated by the ASTM. It is a warm yellow on the verge of being a light orange. Aquarius Orange, P-O-N-A. This orange does not yet have a pigment number, but it has been speculated that this is the same pigment as Winsor & Newton's Transparent Orange. Winsor & Newton previously released this pigment as P0107 when it was considered a limited edition color. However, when they added it to their main line, the pigment number was removed. Roman Schmal says that their version is light fast, semi-transparent, moderately staining, and moderately granulating, although I thought it was a pretty smooth color. Regardless, it is an intensely bright middle orange. Scarlet Red PR166. Azo Condensation Red is another red that I'm not highly familiar with. It is a non toxic, moderately light fast, semi transparent, staining, non granulating pigment. This bright red has undertones of yellow, making it a nice choice for a warm red on your palette. I look forward to getting to know it a little bit better. Aquarius Red, PR214. Pyrenthrone Red Deep is a non-toxic, semi-transparent, staining, non-granulating pigment. There are variable light fastness ratings associated with this pigment, but it mostly is reported to be light fast. This is a middle red, leaning neither strongly yellow or blue. The cooler red that I had on this palette beforehand was an anthroquinone red, PR177. However, this pigment is considered fugitive in watercolors, so I have removed it, leaving me with a lack of cool red or magenta in this collection. Quinacridone pink or quinacridone magenta would be better suited for a more well-rounded palette. Potter's Pink, PR233. Chrome Aluminum Stanate, Chrome Tin Pink, or as we better know it as Potter's Pink, is a light fast, semi-opaque, moderately staining, highly granulating pigment. Older versions of this pigment may have included lead, but modern versions are unlikely to include this element, especially those that are not labeled with a California Proposition 65 warning. For more information on Potter's Pink, you can check out my Color Spotlight episode that I will link above. I'm really excited to try out this pinker version of Potter's Pink as compared to the darker hue I have from Schminke. Perline Violet, PV29. 
Perylene violet is a non-toxic, light fast, transparent, staining, non-granulating pigment. This muted dark violet is more vibrant in this brand than I've seen in other brands. Once again, you can find it on that color spotlight playlist. Mineral violet PB29 and PV19. Mineral Violet is the first multi-pigment color on this palette, however, it is not a hue for the lighter granulating purples that you would see in PV15 or PV16 that are often referred to as Mineral Violet by other brands. This version appears to be made from Ultramarine Blue and Quinacridone Rose. It is somewhat similar to Daniel Smith's Rose of Ultramarine, but this one is much more strongly pigmented and more blue than Daniel Smith's version. Roman Schmal lists this color as light fast, transparent, moderately staining, and granulating. Manganese Violet PV16. Manganese Violet is a light, fast, semi-transparent, moderately staining, granulating, soft reddish violet pigment. As a pre-made paint, the risk of toxicity with this pigment is low. However, it can be problematic if incorrectly handled over long periods of time, particularly if ingested or if the pigment dust is inhaled. In other words, don't lick your brush. Misty Morning PG50 and PV19 Misty Morning is a new specialty convenience color made from cobalt teal and quinacridone rose. Roman Schmal lists this color as light fast, semi-transparent, moderately staining, and granulating. PG50 requires a Prop 65 warning. Contact with the skin may cause an allergic reaction, inhalation may cause asthma, and ingestion may lead to gastrointestinal issues. Avoid pigment dust, do not lick your brush, and make sure to keep these away from pets and children. Also make sure you're disposing of your paint water responsibly. All of that aside, this is a really unique atmospheric color. It is a muted lavender with some pink and teal colors showing through the granulation. Shadow Violet PG50, PB29, and PV19. Shadow Violet is another specialty convenience color made from ultramarine blue, quinacridone rose, and what I believe would be a greener version of PG50 than we just saw in the Misty Morning. Roman Schmal lists this color as light fast, semi-transparent, staining, and granulating. Again, PG50 requires that Prop 65 warning, so all those previously mentioned disclaimers apply. Shadow Violet has quickly become a favorite of mine for backgrounds and value studies. On a high quality cotton paper, this separates beautifully into a muted dark purple with green granulation. Indian Throne Blue, PB60. Indian Throne Blue is a semi-transparent, heavily staining, non-granulating, deep blue that leans towards red. It is usually light fast in watercolors and does not have any known toxicity concerns. French Ultramarine PB29 Ultramarine Blue is a light fast, semi-transparent, moderately staining, granulating blue. This version is extremely pigmented and leans towards red. Cobalt Coelan Blue, PB35. Cerulean Blue, or Cobalt Tin Oxide, is a light fast, semi-opaque, moderately staining, granulating light blue. PB35 requires a Prop 65 warning like other cobalt colors, so all the previous disclaimers still apply. Ocean Blue, PBR24, and PB15,3. Chrome Titanate and Thalo Blue combine here to make another very interesting convenience blue that separates into various teals, blues, and yellows in wet washes. Roman Schmal lists this color as light fast, semi-transparent, staining, and moderately granulating. PBR24 is often considered a non-toxic replacement for Naples Yellow, However, there is some controversy over this based on its chemical structure, which is similar to chrome yellow, a known carcinogen. In lab testing, PBR24 has been shown to be minimally irritating to the skin and eyes, but at this time, the United States does not require any regulations to be labeled as hazardous. It is, however, listed under the Prop 65 warning, so as with all the paints we've talked about, make sure you use them responsibly. Perylene Green Deep, PBK32. 
This is another new pigment in watercolors similar to Perylene Green PBK31. This Perylene Black made with PBK32 is a dark desaturated green. Roman Schmal lists this color as light fast, semi-transparent, moderately staining, and non-granulating. I haven't used this in a painting yet, but one really interesting thing that I want to note here is that the color did not have difficulty scanning into my computer like I have found with almost all of the other Perylene colors. If it proves to be a useful mixing color like PBK31, I might be inclined to switch over so that I don't have as many issues with reproducing artwork while using this hue. Aquarius Green, PY150, PBR25, and PB29. This convenience green is a lovely granulating olive green similar to Daniel Smith's Undersea Green. It is made with nickel azo yellow, transparent brown, and ultramarine blue. Nickel is considered a heavy metal included under Prop 65, so again, please use it responsibly. Hooker's Green PY150 and PB27. This convenience green is not what most people I think would think of as a Hooker's Green. However, I much prefer it as an earthy sap green when compared to the very vivid color called sap green in their line. Roman Schmal labels this paint as transparent, staining, and non-granulating, though I consider it to have some granulation in this swatch. It also lists it as light fast, but keep in mind that it does contain Prussian blue, which is known to fade with sun exposure. Natural Sienna Light PY43. This version of natural yellow iron oxide is a light fast, semi-transparent, moderately staining earth tone yellow. Roman Schmal also lists this as semi-granulating, though I would not consider it as such. It's pretty smooth. It's also very bright as far as yellow ochres go and could replace a warm yellow on an earthy palette. Goethite Earth Pigment. Roman Schmal does not assign a pigment number to this color, but it is a light, fast, heavily granulating, moderately valued brown. I haven't used Daniel Smith's version of the same name in order to offer you a confident comparison, but I am loving the beautiful variation in this version. Aquarius Brown PBR 11. Magnesium ferrite is a light, fast, opaque, low staining, and heavily granulating pigment. It is an earth orange brown that can be used in a number of mixes to create really interesting effects. It is similar to Lunar Earth PBR11 from Daniel Smith or Spinel Brown PY119 from Schmincke. Kimberly Crick has a great video about this pigment, so I will link that above for you if you want to check it out. Red Ochre PR102. Natural red iron oxide varies tremendously depending on the pigment formulation. This version is light fast, semi opaque moderately staining, and has low granulation, though it is rated as non-granulating by Roman Schmal. It is a relatively saturated red-orange earth pigment similar to a Venetian red. Indian Red PR101. Synthetic red iron oxide also varies tremendously depending on the pigment formulation. This version is light fast, opaque, moderately staining, and has low granulation, though it is rated as granulating by Roman Schmal. It is a dull brick earth red pigment similar to other Indian reds. For comparison, it has more texture than my go-to Terra Rosa from M. Graham, but in a very subtle, gentle way. Hematite PR102. Roman Schmal has three versions of hematite now, and you will see two of those three on this palette. This version is simply called hematite, and it is similar to an Indian red, though it has more brown and more granulation to it. It is considered light fast, opaque, staining, and granulating. Kaput Mortem PR102. Kaput Mortem appears to be similar to their new hematite violet shade. Since I already had this pan, I didn't try the third of the hematite colors, but this version is an earth red with a dark reddish brown granulation dominating the overall hue. It is light fast, moderately staining, and highly granulating. Roman Schmal considers it semi-transparent, but I would rate it more opaque than that. Hematite Brown Shade PR102. 
This is the second version of hematite on the palette and is less red than the preceding earth pigments. This color is the most distinct of the bunch, being a middle brown color with dark brown and black granulation. It is considered light fast, semi-opaque, moderately staining, and granulating. Cypress Burnt Umber PBR7 Roman Schmall has three versions of Cypress Burnt Umber, including this one, as well as a light and deep variation. I chose the one in the middle, hoping to approximate a standard burnt umber. This natural iron oxide is light fast, semi-transparent, rated as staining by Roman Schmalls, and is fairly granulating as far as umbers go. Mars Black PBK11 Ferrocephalic oxide, magnetic black, or iron oxide black, whew, that was a mouthful, is a light, fast, opaque, staining black pigment. This is a strongly pigmented, neutral matte black. Roman Schmalz writes theirs as moderately granulating, though I would disagree and say this is a highly granulating color. They do offer two versions of PBK11 in this line. I have not tried Aquarius Black myself, but it does appear to be less densely pigmented from the online swatches that I've seen and might be more akin to Daniel Smith's Lunar Black. Though again, I haven't tried it myself to confirm that. And that will do it for this palette swatch. I hope that you enjoyed seeing what's on my palette at the moment. You can find high resolution scans of this swatch chart over on Patreon, and I'd love to hear from you in the comments. What are some of your favorites from Roman Schmall? Or if you don't have any Roman Schmall yet, what are you most interested in trying? I know you're probably tired of hearing this, but hitting that thumbs up and leaving comments really helps with the algorithm. So thank you so much in advance for leaving those down below. I've also been meaning to add this to the end of a video for a while, but keep forgetting, less than half of you are subscribed. That either means that I'm doing a really good job at bringing in new viewers or a really bad job at keeping you around. I hope it's not the latter, so make sure you're subscribed if you want to see more watercolor content. We'd sure love to see you around. Thank you all to my amazing patrons for your incredible support and to each and every one of you all for watching this video. Until next time. Happy painting.